And people just want to back up from you and go, well, you know, how does it fit into the Bible verses? Mm -hmm. How does it fit into philosophy? How does it fit into everything that we've learned in the outer world? And it's not about that. It's about uh, waking up to it within our own consciousness and not looking to the outer world for uh, acceptance or validation from the past, all that we've known, but waking up in this now moment and moving forward in this consciousness. But how it started was um, being a child and having these tall uh, gold white and bluish white beings visit me. And it wasn't unusual. In fact, it was wonderful. It was it was these beings that I loved and they loved me and there wasn't any kind of comparison to anything else yet because I was just a young child. Um, and so I have that as my marker for what's natural. These experiences happened um, many, many, many times. I, dozens and dozens of times over my life in a variety of forms. Some were more uh, frightening than uh, others and it was simply what I attribute to the gap that starts to grow between your persona that you know you start to believe this is who you are in the outer world mm -hmm. versus who you know you are but you can't speak about it in the mm -hmm. outer world so that gap grows and that's where fear and everything that you don't understand about you know like or trauma any kind of trauma goes in that that chasm and then when these high vibrational beings come to interact the fear just rises to the surface and and then maybe in some of these experiences that people have where they're terrified maybe I can't speak for other people only myself perhaps there is a bit of our own fear coming up and we don't know what to do with it so we project and this is what we do in our everyday lives too you know we, if we can't own our own you know emotional um, you know unconscious emotional debris if we can't own that and heal that ourselves then that gets flung out at other people mm -hmm. um, projected onto them so it's the same thing with these high vibrational beings and that's why they can't come near us in a, in a physical way, in a more physical way, uh, many cases, because, uh, and it's why we have to be frozen in place sometimes when, when we have the interactions, because otherwise we'll just flail around and go into incredible fight or flight kind of um, actions, because mm -hmm. it's our own fear, you know, um, has nothing really to do with with the beings that are coming to interact with us in a lot of cases there might be negative beings i'm not saying they don't exist but mm -hmm. again i'm only speaking from my own experience well and it's interesting how there's the media puts out so much and with youtube and different you know networks of different ways of getting information we can hear about so many different types of experiences and yeah. i always feel like hollywood really movies really portray experiences in a terrifying way as if there's something very sensational about scaring people well it sells and, yeah yeah and we're we maybe we're getting addicted to this you know we're paying to get that thrill and um yeah but when we're having an actual experience because mm -hmm. i think anyone could mm -hmm. so much of that is part of it at that time, you know, when we start to influence feel, us, us. Yeah, yeah, and how we're going to process it. Well, right. This is where they're going to hurt me, or this is where something bad is going to happen. Or right, that's <clears throat> a very good point because we have a tendency to uh, take what we've learned and try and mesh those two things together. And in a lot of cases, it has nothing to do with that at all. And if we could just be with the experience rather than being influenced by what the world told us, again then so much more can come uh, mm -hmm. from understanding than if we don't allow the world to influence us in this way. But before I forget, I wanted to say too that there are lots of modalities of experiencers. Mm -hmm. um, there's the near-death experience, then what I just spoke of, uh, contact with non-human intelligence. There are uh, uh, the bioenergetic events that we spoke of. 
um, the uh, psychoactive plant mm -hmm. medicines, um, sometimes just spontaneous meditation experiences, um, lucid dreams, out-of-body experiences, and, and more. I just, uh, those are the ones that I can think of right now. So an experiencer really, for me, the definition of an experiencer is one who has been taken beyond all that we know mm -hmm. and all that we've been told. And we have a direct experience of something that has not been explained properly in our everyday world. Religion uh, is, is used to explain things. Um, science is used to explain things, but they don't. Mm -hmm. They can't because it's a one-on-one -on -one experience with the cosmos. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you can find people who have had like experiences and you can find resonance with those people. Like, uh, I had this experience, you had that, but the common denominator in all of these experiences is that we felt and experienced something more than what we realized or what we were told we were. Mm -hmm. And then when we return, a lot of times our culture and um, other conditioned people around us will say, oh, well, that's just da-da-da, you know, whatever they learned or, in, or that's a demon, you know, if they're religiously oriented and, and, and this has been conditioned into them to believe that anything outside of what's here in the Bible or other sources, um, that, that it's of the devil. Mm -hmm. And that's not really fair because what's happening, I feel, through these experiences is it's not about ETs. It's not about um, the angels that we meet on the other side when we die and come back. It's not, that's all just the characters in this story that leads us back to our Creator and having that direct contact and connection with our Creator again, that divine source. But it's really just them kind of nudging us and saying, you're more than this, and let me show you. Let me show you who you are, mm -hmm. so that you can perhaps go tell other people, you know, in your family, in your communities, that you had this experience, and you felt God, or you felt love, or, you know, just to begin the conversation, mm -hmm. you know, that there's more, and, and to not shut it down but to be welcoming of these, uh, the voices of these experiencers mm -hmm. because they have a lot to share. I found myself scanning the sky Looking for the saucers of light